Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Dana Andrews, Donna Reed, and Anne Revere in Deep Waters. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Since the days of the clipper ship, men of the main coast have followed the sea. They've conquered its storms, lauded its beauties, and scorned the lowly landlubber. Tonight's play is the drama of such a man, of a girl who loves him and a child who brings them together. It's the 20th Century Fox motion picture, Deep Waters, a story of great charm and sincerity. And we have the same star you saw in the film, Dana Andrews. Playing opposite Dana tonight is a young lady who's always been a favorite here, the lovely and talented Donna Reed. The scene of the play is that stern and rock-bound shore called Down East. As a matter of fact, it's probably the most easterly point in America where Lux Flakes are used. But east or west, American housewives know that Lux Flakes are equally dependable everywhere, and they act accordingly. It's playtime, and here's the curtain rising for the first act of Deep Waters, starring Dana Andrews as Hod, Donna Reed as Anne, and Anne Revere as Mary. A little fishing village on the coast of Maine. A car stopped at a pleasant little house not far from the bay. A car bearing the emblem, State of Maine Welfare Department. A young woman and a boy have reached the end of a journey. Well, Donnie, it's a nice house, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Gosh, Miss Freeman, look at that bald-headed schooner out there in the bay. She's just like the one my Uncle Ma used to have. Yes, Donnie. You like boats, Miss Freeman? Well, some of them, maybe. I sure like boats. Better than anything, I guess. Oh, come in, Anne. Been expecting you all afternoon. Hello, Mrs. McKay. Well, here he is. Donnie, this is Mrs. McKay. Donnie? How do you do, ma'am? How old are you, Donnie? Going off 13. Mighty small for your age, aren't you? No, ma'am. Father drowned at sea, huh? It ain't unusual in these parts. He lived with his uncle after that. Captain Mai Mitchell of Port Clyde. Well, boy? Uncle Mai... He's dead, too. Lost in the big storm of March three years ago. Well, since then, Donnie's been a ward of the state. Mm, quite a record he's made for himself. Run away three times. Why? I think I can Elkins explain... Elkins Farm, Waldo County, eight months. What'd you run away for? Didn't like the farm. Mm-hmm. Apprentice to Manuel Santos, storekeeper, Waterville, six months. Ran away. Why? Didn't like him neither? No. Well, maybe you won't like it here. Oh, I think he will. It's a lot different oh, here. Oh, let him answer McKay. for himself. Well, I don't know. I guess I will. Will what? Run away? No, ma'am. <laughs> Can you cut wood? Yes, ma'am. He's a good boy, Mrs. McKay. He wants to learn, and he needs your guidance. You want to see your room, Donnie? Go on up the stairs. First door on the right. Yes, ma'am. Now you understand this, Anne. I'm taking the boy only on probation. If he's a good boy, I'll keep him and glad to do it. If he isn't, back he goes. Yes, I understand. I can't help it if he's a state kid and an orphan. All I want is someone to do the chores now that I'm all alone here. You're going to like him. Everybody does. He's a fine boy. Fine boys don't snoop. Hey, you up there, what are you snooping for? You want to hear something, come down and listen. I don't think he's snooping, Mrs. McKay. Well, maybe not. He's had a hard time these last three years. That Portuguese storekeeper treated him very badly. Our board's investigating it right now. Oh, poor little devil. That's why I brought him to you. You've raised kids of your own. Oh, I'm not going to raise any more now, Anne Freeman. I've got no affection left to pour out on anybody. Mm, sure, I know you. As far as I'm concerned, he's just a boy to do the chores. You hear that, Donnie? Just a boy to do the chores. Yes, ma'am. Well, say hello to your ma for me. Haven't seen her lately. How's she been? No better, no worse. After Pop died, well... Oh, you ask me, Anne. I tell you, we women deserve all the misery and the heartache that's ever come to us. Not a brain in our heads. Marrying seagoing men, spending half our lives looking out to sea, wondering when they'll come home, if they'll come home. A woman who marries a fisherman ain't got the sense to... Oh, Anne, I'm sorry. 
Guess I forgot about you and Hod Stillwell. Hod? Oh, don't be sorry. We broke our engagement last week. Oh, Anne. It's all right. I feel just the same as you do. Hey, uh... Well, come on down, boy. Let's have a look at you. Yes, ma'am. Now, uh, first off, you know, we're not going to get anywhere acting like a couple of dogs. I ain't no dog. Nobody said you was. But you were shying off like I was going to chain you up. Now, nobody's trying to put anything over on you. Just you do your work around here, and I'll do my part by you. And anything you don't like, just speak up and say so, because I will. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Didn't aim to jump you the first minute you got here. Now, you get yourself washed, and we'll have some supper. Goodbye, Donnie. Bye, Miss Freeman. Oh, you're not staying in? I thought you were going no, to stay... No, I've got to stop by the post office before it closes, and I'm driving out to Mother's place. I'll be back during the week. Thanks again, Mrs. McKay. Maybe I'll be thanking you. Huh, Donnie? Ma'am. Then again, maybe not. Be a good boy, Donnie. You'll do fine here. Just fine. Here's your mail, Hard. Looks like most of us for your partner, though, as usual. Thanks, Sam. How's Lobsterman? I haven't seen it worse. Hey, Joe, mail. For me? Hey, I'm very popular fella, huh? Yeah. Joe Sanger, Joe Sanger. Oh, Farm Magazine. Ah, thanks. Very good. Wait a minute. There's more. Joe Sanger. Mr. Joe Sanger. Joe Sanger Esquire. That's me, too. At least I got a bill. Holy smoke, whatever I got for a partner anyway. Me? Who do you think? Hey, Hod, look at this one in the magazine. I raised my family on walnuts, says Leroy Helton. That's huh? No, walnuts. That's something, eh? <laughs> I thought you were a turkey man, Joe. No, I'm through with turkeys. Turkeys you got to feed. But these walnuts, they just drop off and you reach. Just like that, huh? A dime in every walnut. Yeah, sure. No, 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 these things you got I to... I hate pl- to disturb a millionaire, but we've still got to eat. Oh, sure. I almost forget the groceries. I get them, Hod. I'll see you down at the dock. I've got a couple of... Oh, hello, Ann. Oh, wait a minute. Don't run away. Breaking our engagement isn't going to start a feud, is it? No, I, I don't see why it should. Still friends? Still friends, Hod. Then we still got that date tonight, huh? Date? Well, this is Friday, remember? We were going to dinner. Oh, I'm sorry, Hod, but I'll have to work tomorrow. Did you change your job? Why, no. Why? Why, nothing. Only when you made the date originally, you had to work just the same. All right. We've got a date, then. But just as friends, nothing more. Promise? Absolutely. Talk about nothing but the weather. Seven o'clock. Okay, Hod. I, I'll be ready. Feel like dancing? Somebody just loaded the jukebox. All right, Hod. Sure. Ann? I... I still got the ring. Hod, please. Now, keep your feathers down. I just meant that the fellow wouldn't take it back. Guess I'm stuck with it. Unless I can find somebody else. Oh? Haven't changed your mind, have you? Have you changed yours? You know I wouldn't be any good with that job in town. I'm just a lobsterman. I'll never be anything else. You know that. You could be anything you wanted to be. All right, Ann. I'll do it. Do what? I'll take that job in Portland. It might be a little rough for a while, but I think we can work it out, don't you? No, Hod, no, I don't. It would never work. And it wasn't fair of me to ever ask. One you. minute you say one thing and I try to do what you want me to, and I then... know. I'm sorry, Hod. You've got what you want here, haven't you? Your own house, your own island, your own boat. You wouldn't be happy anywhere else. And after a while, I guess I wouldn't be happy either. We'd have each other. That way we could work anything out. Could we? Marriage is something that has to last. What would it be like in five years? Ten years? Look, Ann. I love you. And you love me. Don't you? You know you do. You're not being fair. We came here as friends. Can't we let it go like that? No. Hod, please, just give me time to think. Please give me time. Hey, uh, Joe. Well, we've discussed the weather. Now, what about your job? What's this about working tomorrow? It's that boy I told you about, Donnie Mitchell. I've got to make out the report for the office. And you? I think I'll go duck hunting. Joe says he saw some ducks over on the island. Say, maybe you'll be finished in time to come along with us. Well, thanks, Hod, but I, I don't think so. Okay. Now, well, come on. Let's get out of here. Uh, 
Hey, how's the duck hunting? They're all gone now. I knew somebody scared them off. I've been watching you. That was tough luck. But you did a good job of hunting. What'd you scare them for? Now, wait a minute. Don't hang it on to me. They were just feeding out. Maybe they'll come back. A lot of good that'll do me. Only had two shells. This year, Island? Yeah. Oh, don't worry. You're welcome to come here. Aren't you the new fellow at Mary McKay's? Yeah, the state kid. I'm hard still, well. How'd you get over here? Rode out in a skiff. How'd you learn to handle a gun like that? My Uncle Mai taught me. He used to take me gunning. Uncle Mai? Well, it wouldn't be Captain Mai. Mitchell used to be down to Port Clyde, would it? What if it is? Oh, nothing. I just mentioned it. My name's Mitchell, too. Donnie Mitchell. I thought there might be a connection. You know, I went to the banks a couple of seasons with Captain Mai. You did? Oh, well, some years ago. I knew your pa, too. Say, he was a pretty good man with a gun, wasn't he? Uncle Mai said my pa's one of the finest shots in the county. I tried to tell Farmer Elkins that... I guess nobody recollects my pa no more. Now, where'd you get an idea like that? Plenty of people around here remember your pa. <laughs> you ought to talk to my partner, Joe Sanger. He and your pa were shipmates once. Sanger? Oh, a Portuguese, huh? Yeah, why? I don't like Portuguese. Oh, now, listen, kid. Your pa, or your uncle my either, they wouldn't let anybody tell them about a fella. They always went and found out for themselves. Yeah? Well, I gotta be going. I got some chores to do. Time you roll back to the mainland, gonna be kind of late for chores, isn't it? What chores can wait? I ain't a dog and I ain't no horse. Now, hold on, hold on. Here. I got a couple of nice ducks here. If you can use them. What do you want for? Nothing. I, I just thought maybe Mrs. McKay wouldn't worry so much about the chores if, well, a couple of nice birds are a couple of nice birds. Okay, I'll take them. Well, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and thank you. <laughs> Come back again sometime. We'll talk about your poor and your Uncle Mai. Sure. And thanks again. Come in, Anne. Thank goodness you got here. The office gave me the message when I phoned in. What is it, Mrs. McKay? What's the trouble? Trouble? It's Donnie. Gone since morning, and here it is an hour past supper time. Maybe he went duck hunting again. No, he couldn't have. I loaned my shotgun to old man Peters. Well, didn't he say anything or do oh, anything? Oh, I scolded him for dilly-dallying with the firewood this morning. Then when I went out to call him for dinner, there was the wood saw broke clean in two and him gone. You don't suppose something's happened to him? I've supposed everything. When he didn't come in for dinner, I thought sure he'd made my supper. If it's all right with you, Anne, I'm going to call the state troopers. There's our lobster float, Hod. I shut off the engine. Shut her off. Hey, what's that by the float? Somebody skiff? Huh? Yeah. yeah, it must have drifted out from the mainland. Pick it up with a boat hook. I wonder how that happened. I don't know. Well, let it go for now. We'll pick it up after we unload. We got anything left in this float? I look. I think we leave a few lobsters from last time. We'll take the skiff to the mainland first time we go in. Find out who lost it. Okay. Let's go, Hod. Give me the catch. I put him in the float. Hey. Santa Maria, what do we got here? What are you talking about? In the float. You, Kiro, what are you doing in there? Donnie. Holy smoke. Are you crazy, kid? It's a good thing those lobsters are plugged or we'd be hauling you out in pieces. What were you doing in there? Only wanted a couple of old lobsters. Oh, I see. Get in the boat. In this country, boy, lobsters are a man's living. You don't rob his pots and you don't rob his floats. Well, I didn't know it was yours. That only makes it worse. A man looks out for his enemies, but his friends. You know, a man doing that would be sent to jail if he was lucky. A kid like you would be sent to reform school. How do you like this kid? What would your Uncle Mai have done if he'd have caught you doing this? Well, tarnation on me, I guess. That's just what you need, a good thrashing. Go on, whip me if you want to. I wouldn't lay a hand on you. But I'm going to do the next best thing. Now, get on the boat. Get on, get aboard. Just don't stand there. Where have you been? I said, where have you been? He's been with me, Mary. Well, that's small comfort. Well, come in. We've even got the state police looking for you. Donnie, you're soaking wet. Hello, Ann. Yeah, he's wet. He had a little accident. He fell in the water. That's a sure way to get wet. Well, I'd, I'd better call the police and tell them he's safe. As for you, young man, you kite yourself upstairs and get out of those clothes before you catch pneumonia. Go on, now, get. Yes, ma'am. Lots of problems to raising a child, aren't you, Mary? Child? He's got the brain of a giant. He can think of more ways to devil a person. No, he wasn't trying to devil you, Mary. He was afraid. Afraid of what? He's afraid of you. 
He told me the whole story about breaking that saw. He told me it was an accident. I believe it was. Well? Well, he stayed away all day because he was just plain afraid to face up and tell you about it. It was only a saw. I know, but I guess it seemed pretty important to him. He's... He's awfully sensitive, Mary. He hasn't had things very easy. It takes patience with a kid like that. Well, patience ain't my long suit. But kids, I don't want to hit him a lick or put my arms around him. He hasn't had any supper now, has he? Come to think of it, neither have I. Well, no more trouble for two and for one. Come on in the kitchen. Well, now that everything's all right again, I think I'll be driving back to Belfort. Oh, I'm sorry I dragged you down here for nothing, but thanks, Ed. <laughs> Good night. Night. Do you have to go back right away? Well, it's a long drive. Yeah. Well... I woke up. Well, you told her goodbye quick enough. Too quick. Looks like it was successful, though. Hmm? That's lipstick, ain't it? When's the wedding? Oh. Nothing like asking, is there? No. Afraid there isn't going to be a wedding. I guess Anne just doesn't want to marry a lobster man. Smart girl, maybe... What you looking for in my cupboards? Dandelion wine. Did you make any this year? Of course not. Get out of there. Okay, okay. You let a man come in out of a cold night and not give him anything? Oh, go take it. Second shelf from the top. But none for me. Oh, of course not. Think I want the ladies to eat after me? <laughs> Mary, you're not letting Donnie worry you, are you? Why would he worry me? He's just as nice and quiet as a three-year-old bull. <laughs> Takes a lot of handling. The kids had a tough row to hoe. So is everybody else. No, life's no clam bake. Say, you know, I could use that boy on my boat on Saturdays. Paying two bits an hour. Cute, aren't you? You and him cook this up together? <laughs> no, I just thought of it. Not a bad idea either. You might make enough to pay for that saw. Oh, who said anything about paying for a saw? Donnie? Yes, ma'am. Come right down now. Supper's about ready. Well, if he's coming with us on Saturday, you'll have to have him up early. We leave around five. All right, all right. He'll be on time. Well, kid, how do you like lobster rings? Well, I sure like it fine, huh? Uh, some business. Wake up in the middle of the night, break your back all day. Hey, kid, are you lobstering or fishing? Well, Hans said I could fish for a while. Think you'll be able to go with us again next week, Donnie? Oh, sure. You've got a lot of chores to do for Mrs. McKay. A lot of wood to chop. I'll chop it on us. It might be a little tough with only an axe, now that you've busted the saw. Yeah, but I'll do it. Well, here's the trap. Six lobster hot, pretty good size. All right, bait up the box and throw it back in. Bait. I'm going to get me a farm someday so far away from this ocean, I never smell bait again. I got to Connecticut. You wait and see. <laughs> Doesn't it smell in Connecticut? No, nobody smell in Connecticut. All right, pull up your line, Donnie. We've got to move out. Fish, fish! Hey, hey, get back in the boat. Where do you think you're going? Hey, uh, the kilo's got something, maybe a whale. Hold on to him, Donnie. Bring him in. I'm trying to right now. He's pulling off. That's it. Keep him coming. Don't let him get any slack in your line. That's it. Tight. Say, hey, you have got a fish, haven't you? Oh, what could it be, Hart? We'll find out. Need any help? No. I can get him. I hope. <laughs> Shark, maybe, huh? No, I don't think so. He's running more like a halibut. He won't get Keep at him, Donnie. Keep him coming. Did you see him yet? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There he is. Holy smoke, it is a halibut. Big as handless rock. Santa Maria, some halibut. Hold him, kiddo. I get the gut. This fish you do not lose. <laughs> Here's your money, hard. The lobsters plus the halibut. $57.80. Pretty good day. Not bad. Mm, mighty fine halibut. Don't know what they're fighting. That uh, depends on who's fishing for them. I want you to meet the champ, Donnie Mitchell. Well, now, that's some fish, son. Mitchell, huh? You don't happen to be no relation of old Captain Maya Mitchell or Johnny Mitchell now, would you? Captain Maya was my uncle, and, and John, he was my pa. You don't say. Well, now, no wonder you're a fisherman. <laughs> well, here's this here, Donnie. Two bits an hour. That's a buck and a quarter. Four and a half for the fish. Five dollars and seventy-five cents. Cash on the barrel head. Gosh, I never earned that much, huh? I, I had too good of a time. <laughs> a lot of money, son. What do you aim to buy with it? I'm going to buy me a brand new... A brand new saw. Hey, hard. <laughs> somebody there on the other side of the dock. Huh? Oh. Miss Ann, look. Look at the fish I caught. Oh, hello. Who did you 
they caught that fish? The kiddo, all by himself. We don't give him no help, not even one little bit. It's a halibut. And look what I got. Five dollars and 75 cents. Say, I think I'll take up fishing. That's not a bad idea. I could use another hand, provided you can cook better than Joe. Oh, you'd better let well enough alone. You keep away from lobster boats, me son. Buy yourself a farm, raise potatoes. Will you go fish with us next Saturday? Oh, think about it, Donnie. Look. I'll drive you home. Now get in my car and wait for me. Well, I gotta help Joe wash down the deck. I think Joe can manage alone. No, I think maybe Donnie had better Look, go Donnie, and get... Donnie, I want to talk to Hod. Now, go up there and wait for me. Yes, ma'am, I'll go. Man, I wish you hadn't done that. Done what? Well, the kid's just had the biggest time of his life. You took some of the edge off it for him. I'm sorry, Hod, but that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You shouldn't have taken him out with you. Well, why not? A boat out, out there in the open sea... What if something happened to him? Well, if you want to look at it like that, he could fall down in the backyard and break his neck. Just going out on a Don't boat doesn't me mean you... Don't tell me about boats in the sea. I was raised here, too. Half the people in this town have lost somebody at oh, sea. I know, Anne, you but you... know, but do you really know? You go out there. But what about the women who sit at home and wait and watch and pray? Ask them if there's any danger out there. Are you talking about Donnie or about yourself? I'm talking about my responsibility. If, if something happened to Donnie, I, I'd never forgive myself. Well, suppose he wants to go with us again. And suppose I want to take him. Then you'll force me to move him somewhere else. Yeah. I'm sorry, Hod, but that's the way it's got to be. Well, suppose we talk about it later, huh? Tonight, maybe. No, Hod. Not tonight or any other time. Yeah. Go after her, Hod. I clean up everything. Well, I'm through going after her, Joe. Well, I guess that's that. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of Deep Waters. What's the new in fashion in Hollywood, Libby? Well, it wouldn't surprise me if Loretta Young and Celeste Holmes set a fashion for personal charm that doesn't depend on glamorous clothes. In their picture, Come to the Stable, they wear nun's habits throughout. And yet they're so human and delightful, they make even a racetrack tycoon contribute to their pet charity. What amazed me was the championship tennis Celeste played in her nun's habit. Did you notice that 20th Century Fox planned an especially smart wardrobe for Dorothy Patrick for contrast in Come to the Staple? Dorothy likes seamless nylon, so the studio ordered super sheer ones for her. Mmm, the bare leg look, eh? Mm hmm, but much sleeker and trimmer than really bare legs ever look. Naturally, her nylons were luxed after every wearing to keep their fit and make them last longer. You don't catch Hollywood studios or smart girls anywhere taking risks with nylons. They've discovered that Lux flakes cut down needless runs. In fact, make all kinds of stockings last twice as long. Strain tests prove that. Using strong soaps or rubbing with cake soap really does make runs come sooner. But gentle Lux Flakes Care actually gives you twice the wear. That's just like getting two pair of nylons every time you buy a pair. And extra glamour. It's no wonder so many of Hollywood's famous legs wear nylons washed with Lux Flakes. Any girl can give her stockings this same wonderful, safe care. It's easy. These tiny diamonds of Lux burst into thick, creamy suds in a flash. Whisk away soil almost like magic. Make stockings wear and wear. And what a help that is to the budget. We return you to William Keeley. The curtain rises on the second act of Deep Waters, starring Dana Andrews as Hod, Donna Reed as Anne, and Anne Revere as Mary. It's the following morning and the lobster boats tied up on Hod Stillwell's Island. On the rickety dock, Joe's mending the traps, but well aware of his approaching visitor. Hello, kiddo. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Hey, how come you're all way out over here? How come you're not in church, eh? How come you ain't? Me? Six o'clock I am there. Don't you worry about Joe. Church doesn't start till 10. What do you mean? We got six o'clock mass, seven o'clock mass, Eight o'clock, we, we got plenty mass. Oh, the other church, huh? What you doing, Joe? Oh, fixing up the lobster traps. All the time, gotta fix up the traps. 
You take George's advice, kiddo. You want to be a fisherman? Don't do it. You get yourself a nice farm. Come here. You see this magazine? I show you something. You see this? Huh? Oh. Raise mix. Minx? That's what it says, don't it? Find the fortune in fabulous furs. Something, eh? I'd rather fish. You don't read what it says. This fella here, he sell you mama mink and papa mink for $100. I like fishing better. Okay. Now look, when baby mink grow up, they make coat. See? Like coat on pretty girl in a magazine. I don't like girls. Okay, don't look at the girl. Just look at the coat. <laughs> you know how much that coat costs? Six thousand dollars, he says. Think of that. Gee, that's more than a lobster boat. Yeah, yeah, you bet you. Don't be surprised if one day Joe is a very rich mink man. Joe. Oh, hi, Art. Oh, hello, Donnie. How's that coming, Joe? They're coming. That's a mighty fine house you got there, Hod. Yeah. Hey, Joe, come on, step on it. Hod, I got something to ask you. Well? Well, I figured that... Well, I just thought... Well, look, you and Joe living here alone, I figured. And... Figured what? Well, was I here every day? I could do the chores for you and work for you in the boat every day. Move in with us? Well, well yeah, sure. I'm uh, sorry, Donnie, I couldn't do that. Well, Mrs. McKay wouldn't mind. I already paid her for the saw. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't do it. Here, Joe, I'll give you a hand. School's out in a couple of weeks. Could I work for you steady all summer? Hey, that's a good idea. Huh? The kiddo maybe. Never mind go... the idea. Let's go, Joe. We're going out. Sorry, Donnie. Gone out now, lobster. You heard me. Wasn't I all right yesterday? Yesterday, you said I was your partner. Oh, that was yesterday, kid. Something's happened. Well, we'll have to break up the partnership. The lobsters aren't running so good these days. I've got to cut down. I'll bet that Miss Freeman. I'll bet that no, she had nothing to do with it. Free that stern line, Joe. Let's shove off. I'm sorry, kiddo. Besides, Minx is much better. Believe me. They don't want me either. Okay, I'll get out of here. I'll run away again. Well, here's Donnie's birthday cake, Anne. Think it'll do? Will it do? It's beautiful, Mrs. McKay. You sure Donnie doesn't suspect anything? This isn't the first surprise party I've handled. You stop in at the drugstore? Mm, they'll deliver the ice cream at 4 o'clock. Good. I told Donnie to go straight from school to the shoemaker's. The shoemaker's going to keep him there till five. By the time he gets home, all the kids will be here. He probably hasn't had a birthday party in years. You've been wonderful with him, Mrs. McKay. Oh, you stop that nonsense and help me wrap his presents. Wind's blowing up, Anne. Looks to me like we're going for a storm. Hello, son. Something you want? Huh? Oh, uh, no, I, I'm just looking. Uh, this is where the bus stops, huh? It stops here at the drugstore? That's right. Schedule's right there on the wall. Figuring on traveling? A lady waiting for a prescription, Mr. Martin. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Boston. Seven dollars and fifty cents. They never find me in Boston. With the money, I, I gotta get it. I just gotta get it. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I... I got something to sell. We buy, sell, and trade anything, son. Best little swap shop in the country. This, uh... This camera. Huh? Let me see that. Looks like brand new to me. It's not new. I, I mean, I ain't ever used it. It just looks like new. You see something you want to trade for it? I want to sell it for $7.50. But that's what they get for this sort of camera brand new. Why, they got some just like this over in Martin's drugstore. How much store. can I get? Give you four dollars. But I gotta have seven fifty. Sorry, boy. Couldn't come out on it at that price. Okay. I'll take four then. Here you are. One, two, three, four. Is that you, Donnie? Yes, ma'am. You get my shoes? Uh, the man said... Uh, he said they won't be ready till five o'clock. Well, you can get them tomorrow. Now, you go up to your room and you study there till I call you for supper. I don't want you going out anymore. Now, what do we do? 
You'll never be able to surprise him. Oh, drat that shoemaker. Oh, well, I'll go upstairs a little later and visit with him. He won't think anything of my being here. Fine day he picks for his birthday. Thunder and blowing a gale out there. May I come in, Donnie? It's Ann Freeman, Donnie. I just dropped by to see if you... Donnie? Are you hiding, Donnie? He isn't here, Mrs. McKay. What do you mean he isn't there? Well, he must have gone out after all. Maybe he went for your shoes. I told him to stay in his room. Maybe he's up in the attic. Donnie? Donnie, where are you? Starting to blow some hot. I'm just as glad we're heading for home. Rain squall. Really black over there by Hazlitt's Rock. Well, let's head for the mooring. Hey, wait a minute. There's a boat out there. Ain't that Nick Driver's boat any gone? Well, he ain't gone out, is he? Nick Driver, he's up in Portland. Maybe so, but I see his boat. Give me the glasses. Well, that's funny. I know Nick's up there. It's the kid. It's Donnie. Oh, no. What are you doing out here? It's him, all right. When I wave, he sees us and turns. What, do you suppose he's looking for us? Why does he turn then? No, he's taking a joyride. That kid is crazy about boats. He's heading out to sea. Yeah, he's a funny kid. I don't even like minks. He can't handle that boat. Not in that sea. We go after him? We'll have to. Okay. She's getting dark, Hug. Open her up. I lost sight of him. I can't see him. Turn on the spotlight. He's still there on the other side of the swell. Donnie! Donnie! Save your breath. Too much sea, too much wind. He's heading straight for Hazler's Rock. Oh, the crazy kid. He hasn't got a chance out there. Donnie! Hart, look! The boat, he turned over. He capsized. Grab a line, quick. He's still there, Hart, hanging onto the boat. Here, take the wheel. Swing this turn around as close as you can to him. Let, don't let the sea take you under those rocks, Hart. I try, Hart, I try. Start swinging! Get close enough to throw him a line before he's pulled under. We hang on, Hutch. She's awful rough. Pull her around. Broadside. Broadside. Donnie! We'll throw you a line. Watch the wave, Hut. I'm throwing the line, Donnie. Now. You do good, Hut. Good. Catch hold with both hands. Both hands. Fight. We're going on the rocks, Hut. Give him more gas. Oh, we bust up for sure. Hang on, Donnie. Bring your heart down to stop it. <laughs> We got a hole. Just another minute. We're swamping hard. Another wave like that and... Hang on to the wheel. I got him. Santa Maria. How did we do that? I don't know. We were born to be hung, I guess. Hey, kiddo. How do you feel? He'll be all right. Just, just get us out of here. Coming, Mrs. McKay. Look out the window. That's Donnie, all right. With Hard and Joe Sanger. Yes. And a fine birthday party. Well, let him in. Hey, we brought you something. Get in here, Donnie. So, he was with you, Hard. Yeah, again. He's drenched. You fill in the water. Every time you do that, you get wet. I, I don't get it. It started out as a surprise party for your birthday. For me? Better get back to the dining room, kids. Donnie will be there in a minute. Only first he's got to get out of those clothes. You heard me, Donnie, now. Upstairs before you get pneumonia. Gosh, a party. Well, this is quite a setting to walk into after what's happened. That's what I want to know. What has happened? Well, I'm afraid he stole Nick Driver's boat. He capsized off Hazlitt's Rock. It's just a miracle he's here. He's trying to run away. Run away? Where? Well, I don't know. Boston, out of the state. What difference does that make? The important thing is he'll keep right on doing it unless something's done. Like what? Look, Ann. Donnie is a fisherman's kid. He's got fishing in his blood. You bring him here to a fishing town where all he sees is boats and then put up a sign, keep off. What do you expect him to do? I told you that the welfare board holds me responsible. It's my duty. Yeah, I know you told me that. You told me a lot of things. There's one thing you didn't tell me or I was too stupid to see it. You're afraid, Anne. You're afraid of the sea. Scared to death of it. All right, suppose I am. I'm sorry, Anne. I'm sorry to have to say it. I know it's a terrible thing for you to fight, but it's affecting other people's lives. It's affecting Donnie's life, and that's not fair. 
Well, I can go good or he can go bad. It's up to you to make the decision. Well? There's nothing more to be said, Hart. Well, tell him happy birthday for me. Hey, Hod, come here. You look at this. What's the matter? The rabbit's sick? Sick? No, they're not sick, Hod. Three weeks ago, I bought two rabbits, like the magazine says. Make plenty money raising rabbits. I build them fine house, everything. Well, what's happened? You got a family? That's the trouble. They don't do like the book says. You think maybe Mama don't like Papa, huh? <laughs> How do I know? Maybe they're both named Charlie. Oh, no, no. This one's named Manuela. I name her myself. You think maybe she don't... Hey, Hart! Hi, Donnie. Miss McKay said it was all right for me to come down and see after school day. I told you, Miss Ann said it was all right with the state for me to work for you on the boat. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Donnie. You mean you'll let me work for you again? Well, there's just one thing that's got to be settled first. Nick Driver's boat. Who's going to pay for that? Well, that's okay, Hart. Miss McKay, she already paid him. That's okay, huh? You think it's right for somebody else to pay for your mistakes? Nick Driver put a lot of store by that boat. If he'd reported it to the police, you might have been sent to reform school. But you'll take me on your boat and let me work and... Would you want a partner that didn't pay his debts? But if you'll let me work Saturdays till school's over, and then I can work for you every day and pay back every cent of it. Honest, I will, Hart. Well, well, that sounds reasonable. Okay, start Saturday morning. Be here at 5.30. Oh, thanks, Hart. Gee, thanks. Oh, gosh, I better go now and tell Miss McKay. Oh, hello, Joe. So long. Yes, so long. This is terrible, how terrible, these rabbits. Now what? You're right, Hod. They both named Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> He said I... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Hello, Miss Freeman. Donnie, wait. Come here. Man? Donnie, I don't know if you know these men or not. This is Mr. Harris from the sheriff's office, and this is Mr. Hopkins. He says you sold him a camera. That's the boy, all right. Did you, Donnie? Tell me the truth. Yes, ma'am. Where did you get it, Donnie? Martin's drugstore. Did Mr. Martin give it to you? No. You mean you just took the camera and then you sold it to Mr. Hopkins here for four dollars? That right? Yes, sir. Oh, Donnie, why? Why? Well, I was going to run away. A bus fare to Boston was... Well, anyway, it wasn't enough. That's why I took Mr. Driver's boat. Well, I guess I'll have to take him to Bellport, Mrs. McKay. Turn him over to the juvenile authorities. I'm sorry for both of you. Oh, Donnie, look at me. I won't tell you not to take this hard. It's bitter hard. Just as we were beginning to understand each other. He'll have to go? You know he does, Miss Freeman. I'll do all that I can to help you, Donnie. Remember that. Don't tell Hart. But Hart will want to help us. <laughs> Don't tell him, please. <laughs> promise you won't tell Hart. I, I promise. <laughs> Don't tell him. Don't tell him. All right, Donnie. We won't tell Hart. I promise. Come along, son. <laughs> Hey, Hod, you stopped in the post office before. Any mail? Yeah. I got a letter from the kid. He's out of town. Donnie, out of town? Yeah. He's in Ferriston. What he says, Hod? Well, his writing looks more like chicken tracks, but he says the state shifted him to a farm in Ferriston. Shifted? But why? Well, so long as he's on farm, that is good. Maybe he'll find the job for me. Hey, listen to this. I wanted you to know why I couldn't be there on Saturday. It's kind of lonesome here on the farm. I don't get to go out much. Tell Joe hello. Yeah, tell Joe hello. That's good, yeah. The kid is okay, eh? I don't know. You know, it's funny. He's leaving like that. And this address, Box 317 Ferriston. He doesn't even say who he's with. He's a kid. He don't think. Hey, where are you taking us? We're cutting around to the Cape. Let's head for Bellport. Bellport? What do we do there? I want to find out something. And I think maybe the answer is in Bellport. She's right in there, Mr. Stillwell. You got a caller, Ann. Hog, what are you doing in Bellport? I wanted to see you, Ann. 
Donnie was supposed to come to work for me last Saturday, and he didn't show up. Oh? Well, I, I know Mrs. McKay's gone to Portland for a while, visiting her brother. Well, you'd think the kid would, uh, would have said something if he was going to leave town. Well, maybe he just forgot. I don't think so. You see, I got a letter this morning from Donnie. He isn't in Portland. He says he's on a farm outside Ferriston. That's right, Hard. He is. Well, what's the mystery? Who's he staying with? I'd like to see him. He didn't tell you? No, but you're responsible for him. You told me that often enough. So you must have put him there. Now, where is he? I can't tell you, Hard. You can't? Or you won't? I promised that I wouldn't. Promised who? I thought when you decided to let Donnie come and work for me on the boat that you'd beaten this fear of yours. But I guess you haven't. All right. You said you'd take him away, so now you have. Hard, I didn't, please. You've got to believe me. That had nothing to do with it. So where is he, Ann? I just can't tell you. Okay. I'll have to find out my own way. Hard, wait a minute. I know you don't believe me, but I've told you everything I can. Now, I'm warning you. If you keep on, you're only going to hurt the boy. The kid's not happy where he is. I can tell that from the letter. I'm going to find him, Ann, and don't you try and stop me. Hard! <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, our stars will return with Act Three of Deep Water. Tonight we have with us an 18-year-old charmer, Miss Vera Miles, who was discovered by a 20th Century Fox talent scout. By the way, Vera, I understand you're quite a football fan. Which is your favorite team? That depends on who takes me to the game, Mr. Keeley. Oh, I see. I guess I have a special weakness for the underdog. Like State College and Father was a fullback. Fred McMurray is my favorite coach. Yes, Marino O'Hara, who plays his wife in that picture, has my sympathy. She and Fred lead a very hectic life when the alumni complain because their team is losing. Aren't their daughters and father was a fullback darling? Maureen and the girls look so natural in their sweaters and skirts and always so well-groomed. Oh, naturally, Vera. Maureen is a good housewife on the screen or off. Her sweaters, like her other washable sports clothes, always get Lux Flakes care. I've really been amazed at the interest stars take in the care of their personal wardrobe. It's not so surprising, Vera, because... Lux Flakes are the favorite of smart girls everywhere, especially for sweaters at this time of the year. College sweaters are such a long-term investment, it's foolish to risk wrong washing methods that may spoil the fit and make wool feel harsh and stiff. Wool needs extra rich suds, and these tiny diamonds of Lux make thick suds in a jiffy, even in lukewarm water, whisk away soil without rubbing. Yet, this fine product of Lever Brothers Company is so gentle, it won't shrink wool, won't fade colors. In fact, anything safe in water alone is safe in Lux Flakes. Thank you for coming tonight, Vera Miles. Here's your producer, Mr. Keeley. Act three of Deep Waters, starring Dana Andrews as Hod, Donna Reed as Anne, and Anne Revere as Mary. <laughs> It's early the next morning, and Hod and Joe are no closer to the solution of Donnie's whereabouts. But there's one man who may be able to help them, Josh Hovey, the shipbuilder. Come in, boys. Come in. Now, ain't this nourishing? I ain't seen you fellas in a dog's age. Well, what can I do for you? You very important political man, George. I think maybe you help more than me. <laughs> What's up, Joe? You want to run for mayor? <laughs> I thought all you was interested in was a farm. <laughs> oh, you bet. Pretty quick now. You see, I get fired. Josh, do you suppose you could use your connections to find out who holds a post office box in Ferriston? Post office box, Ferriston? Yeah. I want the name of the family holding box 317. 317. Uh, Jenny, get me the post office in Ferriston. Let's see now, that'd be uh, Bill Murray. Hurry, Jenny. You didn't fall for one of them matrimonial ads, did you, Hod? <laughs> Here, Joe, have a cigar. You bet. You take one too, Hod. You can give to me later. Well, this uh, box number, it's, it's supposed to be a farm, Josh. 
Only a farm wouldn't have an R would it would have an RFD route, not a box number, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, I, I think it would. Well, find out right now. Hello, Bill. Yep, Josh Hovey. Oh, I'm still alive, I guess. Say, uh, Bill, uh, do you know offhand who rents box 317? Uh, one seven. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not for me, just for a friend. <laughs> yeah, I sure will, Bill. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> wow. What's so funny? <laughs> box 317. <laughs> That's the state reform school. <laughs> reform school? Oh. Josh? You remember Johnny Mitchell? Johnny? Well, sure. We shipped with him, didn't we, Joe? On old Maya Mitchell schooner, the Emily T. Well, Johnny's boy is in that reform school. I want you to help me get him out. Well, now, it's kind of a tall order, Hod. What'd you do with him if we did get him out? Adopt him. Adopt him? Do you want to help us? You know better than to ask that, of course. Do everything I can. May take time, boys. I'll drop by the island, let you know what happens. Thanks. Well, I made the arrangements hard. The boy will get a hearing. I may have to vote for Judge Tate next year, but I got the hearing. You sure good friend, Joyce. Hey, you like a couple rabbits for dinner sometime? I fix for you. Rabbits for sure, sure. Where's the hearing, Josh? When is it and where? Uh, Tuesday morning, huh? 10 o'clock, Bellport Courthouse. It's uh, not going to be easy, son. That kid was arrested for stealing. Stole a camera and sold it. I didn't know. He's a ward of the state. Not too good a record. You take my advice, Hod. Get all the people you can on your side. That Judge Tate, he's honest, but he's a tough old customer. Well, thanks, Josh. I guess the best we can do is try. Sure like your place here, Hod. Always did envy the fellow who owned his own island. You want to sell? Not a chance. Well, you change your mind. Give me first bid. Well, drop by Tuesday morning. We'll all go to court together. This here's his courtroom, Hud. Might as well sit down and wait. I wonder where Joe is. He's been gone now almost an hour. I'm not worried about Joe. It's that girl out there in the corridor. You uh, got her in line, Hud? Ann Freeman? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't see how she could stand in the way of an adoption, but I just don't know. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Here they come. Good morning, Your Honor. Well, who are you? How are you? Fine, fine. Judge, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Wonderful fellow, wonderful. Mr. Stilwell, this is Judge Tate. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Sit down. Oh, uh, you take chair too, Miss Freeman. Thank you. As this more or less friendly uh, family affair here, I... Don't think we need to be so formal. Uh, Miss Freeman, if you'll uh, come a little closer, please. Uh, you too, Mr. Stilwell. I'm sure she won't mind. Now, I usually handle these matters in my chambers, but I have the boy in there, and I don't want to arouse any false hopes in him. <clears throat> now then, Mr. Stilwell. Yes, sir. According to your petition here, you're a single man. It's rather unusual for a bachelor to adopt a child, so you can start by giving me some of your reasons. Well, I... Uh... I know this boy very well. I knew his father and, and his uncle. And I'm sure I can give him more advantages than the state reform school. We won't go into a debate of our state institutions, sir, which happen to have a remarkably fine record, and whose problems I feel certain you are in no position to discuss. I beg your pardon. <clears throat> are you uh, financially able and prepared to care for the boy? I, I think so. I'm a lobsterman. I own my own home, my own boat. I don't have much money in the bank, but I make a pretty good living. Am I too late? I sent her telegram, Hod. I've been to station. Just to get... one moment. This is a private hearing. If you're not an interested party, I'd madam, like I... Know who's more interested. Donnie Mitchell lived in my house. Why, Mary McCain. Hello, Walter. Well, come right in. I didn't mean to disturb the court. Why, no, not at all. We're just discussing Mr. Stilwell's petition to adopt young Mitchell. Well, it? now, why shouldn't he? It's the best thing that could happen to Donnie. It's about time that somebody took an interest in that boy. He's been moved around from pillar to post. Now, just a minute, Just Mary. a minute, nothing. That boy's going to get a square deal if I've got to set fire to the courthouse and you're not going to stop me. Mary, if you now, wish Walter, it... Now, Walter, I've known you for 40 years and I've always liked you. But I'm warning you. If you stand in the way of this boy getting a good home with a man who understands him... Keep quiet, Mary. All I can do is hear both sides and try to decide what's best for the boy's welfare. I'm not opposed to the adoption. You're not opposed to the adoption? You mean I came all the way from Portland for nothing? Now, just sit down, Mary, please. 
I uh, think the Welfare Board has a right to be heard, too. Well, Miss Freeman? Your Honor, the Welfare Board has always felt that it was better to raise Donnie for some inland occupation, so we sent him to several inland farms and homes. We were wrong. Every attempt we made to distract him from the sea resulted in some insubordination. Mm -hmm. Go on. There, there just seemed to be something so deep-rooted, so strong and compelling about this, this calling for the sea that it was useless to fight against it. I've tried and failed. Donnie needs love, guidance from someone he trusts. He needs it especially now after what he's been through. I'm sure if given these things, he can be raised to a good citizen in a useful and honorable trade. Mm -hmm. Then the board has a recommendation to make. What is it? The board recommends that the petition be granted. Well, yeah, Your Honor, I guess that means... Uh, let's not jump to any conclusions. I'm in complete sympathy with your views, but I have a very grave responsibility. Before I can make any decision, I must know what the boy's feelings are. Come in, son. Come in. Well, nothing to be frightened of now. You know these people. Well, it seems that Mr. Stilwell wants you to come and live with him. He wants to adopt you, make you a son. Would you like that? No. Tony. Don't you want to live with Joe and me? Work on the boat every day. Be my partner? No. But why? <laughs> well, I got reasons. Excuse me, George. Is it okay if I talk? Mm, go ahead. Tony, you come to live with her and Joe. And Joe, he no buy farm. He no raise minks. He stay with you. Every day we fish. Okay, Donny? No. Donny, come here. Don't you like Hard anymore? Yes. Then why don't you want to go and live with him and be on his boat again? Because I went to a farm school, that's why, because I stole a camera. But Donny, I know that. I found out what happened. Y you did? Sure. And you didn't care? Of course not. But I done it when you told me never to hide. I know, Donnie, you made a mistake. But you paid for it. We all make mistakes sometimes. The important thing is not to make them again. <gasps> oh, hide. Ha. Well, folks, I guess the petition's granted. Test off, Joe. Okay, where are we heading? Home, of course. Well, Donnie, there's the wheel. Take us home. Yes, sir. But, Miss Freeman, I mean, uh, ain't we got one too many passengers? You better get used to it, Joe. I'm joining the crew. <laughs> Santa Maria! Alas! Santa Maria, you're not kidding. Hey, cast off the stern line, Joe. Okay, skipper. Okay! Before our stars return for their curtain calls, Libby Collins has some colorful news for you. A special for thrifty shoppers. Eight different varieties of tulip bulbs that will give you a lovely rainbow garden next spring. Yes, the makers of Lux Flakes will send you eight giant prize-winning Darwin tulip bulbs for only 25 cents and the top from a box of Lux Flakes. This special assortment even includes the famous black tulip, La Noir. Now is the perfect time to plant these bulbs to bloom next spring. They'll grow anywhere. Make very showy borders. Or if you want them to bloom this winter, plant them in pots and bring them indoors. These bulbs are a verified $1.25 value, but you can get them for only 25 cents. Just send a quarter in cash and a Lux Flakes box top to Lux Garden Club, Los Angeles 54, California. S send for as many bulbs as you wish. Just be sure to enclose a Lux Flakes box top and 25 cents for each assortment of eight. Allow three weeks for delivery. Here's the address again. Lux Garden Club, Los Angeles 54, California. The supply of bulbs is limited, so send for yours now. This offer expires November 15th, 1949. It's good in the continental United States, Hawaii, and Alaska and is subject to all state and local regulations. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. It's curtain call time, and here are tonight's stars, Dana Andrews, Donna Reed, and Anne Revere.
Congratulations to you all on a fine performance. Thank you very much. You know, Bill, Dana is a perfect example of typecasting when he plays a seagoing man. Yes, I've heard that he has salt water in his veins. Well, everyone in my house certainly loves the water. We seem to spend every spare moment on the boat. What sort of a boat do you have, Dana? A sailboat, a catch, the Valihai. Oh, she's a lovely thing. Like a beautiful woman and seaworthy, <laughs> which some women are not. <laughs> <laughs> How large a craft is she, Dana? Well, it's 80 feet. Sleeps 18, so when my four children get aboard, that's about the right size. Exactly what is a catch? Well, it's a fore and aft rig craft with a large mainmast and a smaller mast aft, but forward of the rudder post, of course. Oh, well, now we know. Have you got a good <laughs> galley aboard? Wonderful. Compact, efficient, cooks wonderful chow. Then I'll give you some advice. When you're washing dishes in the galley, you'll never get rough red hands if you use Lux Flakes. I know, I know. <laughs> I was just wondering, Bill, if you could... Uh... Yes, your Lux Flakes are in the wings, Dana. <laughs> ready to go to sea. And Donnie, you should find Lux Flakes very useful, too, with a new baby at your house. How old is he now? Timothy is two months old and very smart for his age. Well, now you sound like a very proud mother. <laughs> well, naturally, Bill. Now, what about next week's show? Well, it's one of the really great motion picture dramas of recent years. The <clears throat> Metro Goldwyn Mayer success, Green Dolphin Street. We'll have the two original stars of the picture. That's Lana Turner and Van Heflin. And with them, a third star, Peter Lawford. Green Dolphin Street was a best-selling novel and a thrilling motion picture. <clears throat> so with such stars as Lana Turner, Van Heflin and Peter Lawford, we have an attraction you'll all enjoy next Monday night. You can't miss with that one, Bill. Good night. Good night and thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, an emergency has arisen in the treatment of infantile paralysis. The nationwide epidemic has wiped out the March of Dimes Fund, and in another two weeks, care will have to stop. Please don't let this happen. $150,000 every day is being spent for the care and treatment of patients. $14,500,000 are needed at once. Send the biggest contribution you can afford to polio in care of your local post office. Remember, this is an emergency, so please send your contribution now to polio in care of your local post office. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Lana Turner, Van Heflin, and Peter Lawford in Green Dolphin Street. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Dana Andrews appeared through the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn, producers of Rosanna McCoy. Donald Reed will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Chicago Deadline. Heard in tonight's cast were Jeffrey Silver as Donnie and Shepard Menken as Joe. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Green Dolphin Street, starring Lana Turner, Van Heflin, and Peter Lawford. It's so luxurious, screen stars say of the big new bath size Lux toilet soap. You'll say so too when you use this generous satin smooth bath cake. The rich creamy lather is so refreshing, leaves such a delicate clinging fragrance on the skin. It's an exclusive perfume, a blend of many flower fragrances. Rose, jasmine, lily of the valley are just a few. Try this delightful new product of Lever Brothers Company for your daily beauty bath. Let the whole family enjoy it too. You can't buy a finer soap than the big new bath size Lux Toilet Soap. Remember, it's the choice of nine out of ten famous screen stars. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Green Dolphin Street, starring Lana Turner, Van Heflin, and Peter Lawford. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>